If you're questioning Christianity, you've come to the right place because I'm going to talk about pros and cons of being a Christian. If you're questioning your personal faith or maybe looking into Christianity, uh, we're going to talk in detail about some of those things that are good about it and some that are bad. Now, I'll warn you that I am a Christian, so this is not objective. This is my experience and what I've learned in my over 20 years of being a Christian and following Christ. And I'm going to try to be real with you. So if you have questions about Christianity, stick around. Maybe I'll answer them. If I don't answer them, feel free to drop a comment with your question below. I would love to hear from you. So let's jump in. I'll start with the pros. We always start with the good news, right? If you believe the Word of God, the Bible, and you repent of your sins and trust in Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your Savior, that means that you can have assurance of salvation and assurance of eternity in heaven with God as one of his dearly beloved children. That is probably the biggest pro to Christianity is to know that when you die, you're going to a place that is unimaginably wonderful. You know, we all wrestle with the question, what happens after we die? Well, if you repent and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know what's going to happen when you die, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. Number two, life that is wonderful in the present. Life is going to be difficult, no matter who you are, no matter what you believe. Life is hard. That's just the inevitable consequence of living in a fallen world. But when you have the God of the Bible as your friend and as your heavenly father, life is so much more enjoyable, so much more peaceful, and you just have a gift that you won't receive otherwise. You're soul secure and you have the assurance of knowing that God hears your prayers, God loves you, and God is with you. 24 7 all the time and that is actually a reassurance not something to be afraid of or to turn away from that's a great benefit kind of a sub point of that besides peace is you have great joy not just happiness but joy a joy that cannot be shaken it can't be taken away you know that you are redeemed, that Christ died for you, and that results in so much joy to know that God loves you that it's hard to communicate until you've experienced it. Having the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, giving you the joy of the Lord, no matter what comes your way, is immeasurably wonderful. Also, we want to talk about freedom from sin. The Bible teaches that Apart from Christ, a saving faith in Christ, we have no choice but to sin because we're slaves to sin. But when we let the work of Christ and the Holy Spirit take over our lives, God gives us his power to choose to say no to sin. We can choose to follow him. We can choose to live lives of righteousness instead of always screwing up, always sinning, always making mistakes. We have freedom from sin because Christ's blood, the power of his blood, conquered the power of sin in our lives. Also underneath the category of a wonderful life with Christ is friendship with God. God tells us that we're his friends if we love him and do what he commands. Jesus called his disciples friends while he was here on earth. Being friends with God and being able to know that you can approach his throne with confidence. There's nothing like it in the world. Nothing like it. This next one is, it's a little bit hard to grasp because it's not something that we'll see on this side of heaven, but God promises us royalty. We're part of his family. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we're adopted into his family. That means we have all the honors of royalty that will be bestowed upon us in the life to come. And possibly in this life, depending on your end times view. I'm still working that out myself. But royalty. We talked about assurance of salvation. We talked about a life that is great right now. Number three, let's talk about a worldview that makes all the pieces fit. 
Life is crazy. A lot of things don't make sense. You know, there's tragedies, heartbreaks, pain, disease, and suffering. But when we look at the way that God ordered the universe and the biblical worldview, how he set a perfect world in, into motion, and then it was ruined by sin. And from that results all the pain and suffering that the world has ever seen. And that writing our relationship with God through repentance and faith in Christ brings it all together. It makes a whole lot of sense because it's hard, you know, the question of evil, the question of why do bad things happen to good people? It just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense apart from the answers that are very evident in the biblical worldview. Everything just kind of comes together. We're living in a fallen world and God is going to make it right at the end of time. He's going to reward the people that follow him. So if you are considering following Christ, do it now. Do it today. There's no time like the present. Number four, God wrote our playbook. The Bible is a comprehensive piece of literature that outlines God's plan of action from the beginning of time to the end of time. Yes, there is a fixed end of time, which only God knows. He tells us some details about it, and he's fulfilled a lot of prophecies that um, show us that his word is accurate. But we won't really know how it's all going to go down or when until he brings his plan completely to fruition. But we know based on the hundreds of fulfilled prophecies in the Old Testament alone, that God's word is true, it's accurate. And so we can look at his coherent message written by over 40 authors over a period of thousands of years in different languages, different countries, and the fact that it all works together and it all makes sense as a cohesive piece. We have that as our playbook for living. God has revealed to us who he is, what he expects from us and how we can know him and have a right relationship with him. And it's all in the Bible, the word of God. And having that as a resource for us as Christians, there's nothing like it. It is invaluable, absolutely invaluable. I encourage you to read the Bible from cover to cover. If you've never started, start with the Gospel of John in the New Testament. That's a great place to begin. But whatever you do, read it. Understand God. It's the best thing you could ever do for yourself. Just to recap, we've talked about the pros of Christianity, assurance of salvation and eternal destination, the greatness of life now, all the, all the takeaways of that, peace, joy, freedom from sin, friendship with God, and the worldview that comes together naturally and nicely when we believe in God. And then we've talked about the playbook that comes from the Bible that God himself gave to us. So now let's talk about the cons of Christianity, because there are quite a few, actually. And probably the biggest one is that haters are going to hate. Christ warned us in the New Testament when he was here on earth and his words were recorded that people are going to hate you. If you follow Christ, people are going to hate you. I mean, he was the son of God, the only perfect person who's ever lived. And he was hated so much that he was crucified. He was murdered by the religious elite of his time. So if they persecuted him, they are going to persecute and hate his followers, which is you and I, if we're Christians. So we know that. We know to expect that. And in the day and age we live... That's becoming more and more obvious of a reality is that people hate Christians. They hate being told that they're sinners. Do you hate being told that you're a sinner? Well, you are, but there's a solution for that. But a lot of people prefer the darkness rather than the light, and they don't want to be told they're a sinner. But th so that's just inevitable consequence. So number one, haters going to hate. Number two, the expectation is that we live a life of self-denial and sacrifice. That is the way. That is the Christian way. Christ said, take up your cross and follow me. He lived his life here on earth 
as a servant. He came down from his glorious throne in heaven, born as a human, and took on human flesh, which is a downgrade to say the least. And he did that. He lived in obedience to God when he was on the earth. He died our debt, the death that we deserve to die because we're sinners. He paid the price for our sins. He lived a a life of poverty and service to others. And so that's the example he set for us as Christians. So that's what we have. We're not to expect that we should be rich and powerful. That might happen for some Christians, sure, but that's not the expectation. Despite what the prosperity gospel preachers want to tell you, what we can expect is that we should lay down our lives to serve others, to share the gospel, and to serve him with all our might. That's what we can expect. So if you want an easy life, where you just indulge the pleasures of life and the pleasures of this world and live in comfort and ease, it may not be like that. So that's something that you have to brace yourself for. So that was two cons of Christianity. I welcome your questions in a comment below. Um, This is kind of a broad overview, and it's notably, it, it is a little heavier on the pros than the cons because As a Christian, obviously, I believe that the pros of Christianity far outweigh the cons, which is why I'm talking about this, because I want you to know the peace and the joy and the logical coherence that comes from knowing the God that created the universe, that created the order that we see in life all around us, and to know the peace that comes from being right with God. And so that's why I wrote the blog version of this that you could find down below. And that's why I'm recording this video, because I want you to know Christ. And if you're watching out of scorn or hate, I'm praying for you that you will accept Christ. There's no greater gift in this life and the next to be on the side of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the judge of all the earth. Now is the time to repent of your sins and trust in Christ as Lord. I welcome any questions as comments below and have a blessed day. If you like this video, I'd love it if you'd subscribe so you can catch more like it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.